So I want to talk about give you an example of how I'm doing this. So I'm doing some research on introverts in the executive suite. So I presented this uh, at a couple different locations in the last uh, month. And I'm just going to show you an example of what I mean by this. Okay? So I'll show you by... Uh, so, so one of the things I start off with is I interviewed for the Globe and Mail uh, General Martin Dempsey, who's the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, until about a month ago in the U.S. A four-star general, the most senior general in the world. He sits behind Obama when they talk about war. Okay? So he said something very interesting, that generals fight the battles of their youth. What he means by that is that he was out of uh, West Point, had a tank in the Cold War as a, a lieutenant, and he learned a lot about leadership and strategy from men and women that had been soldiers, young people in Vietnam. He became a general in Desert Storm. The point is the strategies of leadership and of war were very different between Vietnam, the Cold War, and Desert Storm. Is that a fair statement? What he's saying is that you learn penetrating lessons about leadership and about teaching in your 20s, early 30s, but you become a general in your 50s. He says, what you've got to do is throw a lot of your learnings over the side of the boat. Does that make sense to you? Okay. So I will talk to, and this, I say this to executives, I say this to executives who are older, and hearing is going, that, and they agree. And then what I say to them at this point in groups of three, discuss a lesson you've had to throw over the side of the boat from your 20s. So if you guys were not, if you guys were older, there's a bit of gray here, uh, I would ask you in groups of three to discuss that idea. What I've done is present an idea in two minutes. Now I'm going to have two or three minutes of you discussing that idea. And I do it in groups of three because in a, like when we teach our IM, PM, uh, IMHO, and so on, we have round tables, so there is no front of the classroom. Here, there's clearly a front where I'm the authority, I'm in charge, you're not, and the room reinforces that thought. Where it slants down to me as the font of all knowledge and truth, right? Which is silly, but that's the way it is. Round floors, not round floors, flat floors, round tables, got to get that right, there is no front of the classroom. So Henry Mintzberg, who's our most famous professor, probably at McGill, one of the great gurus in the world of management, he gets up at the front of programs and says, Carl and I have PhDs, we've written books, and that's good, but your knowledge is as valuable or more valuable than our knowledge. And when Mintzberg says that, everybody goes, wow, that's incredible. So if he says it, it means that I've got to mean it even more. So in our classroom, we have that setup which says there is no front, there is no one place of knowledge. This classroom is contrary. So to break that down a little bit, I have in groups of three, and why I choose three is because you can hear each other, and two may be too much pressure on one person to perform, where five or six, someone's going to get lost in the shuffle. So that's why I use three, because you can hear each other, and it allows the introverts an out, a time to think a little bit. Well, someone else, the extrovert, jump right in. So what I would normally do is have you discuss this, uh, and I'll have you do a discussion in a minute, and then what I do is I then share uh, a couple lessons I've had to throw away. One is when I worked for IBM, information was power that I would hold close to my chest was that I can manipulate you as a manager. But what I say in today, in the world of Google, I can't do that anymore. In fact, what we're doing in big companies is sharing information. I interviewed the uh, CEO of Uber last night for my radio show. And Uber is fascinating because uh, one of my other students came to class, works at Uber, brought a guy whose first day at Uber was that day. His second hour was in my classroom. That guy could see any information the GM of Quebec could see. And in fact, I think pretty much any information that the CEO could see other than salaries incredible amount of knowledge that we share now, and as a manager, as a leader, I no longer have that power over you. I don't know if that makes sense to you in terms of your age, but a dramatic shift in the world. So what I go through and share some of my own experiences about credentials, about hierarchy, and just say, but what it is, I'd have you in groups of three discuss, and then I would do, and, and I would go around listening to people's ideas. So I would listen in, and when I listen in, I get down because I'm tall, like this. So I'm not towering over you. I'm at your own level. And I don't look you in the eye because I don't want to stop the conversation. So if you're talking and, and you look at me and if, expect me to say, I'll say, keep talking. And I'll look away because I don't want to be part of that. I don't want to dominate the conversation. So again, uh, some of you are not as tall. You don't have to worry about this. But again, 
I often sit on the edge of the desk rather than standing or get down because I want to reduce that hierarchy. And I want their conversation to be, but I'll listen and say, that was real interesting. And I'll say, do you mind if I call on you? And most people say, sure. Because I'm saying as the authority, I think it's a good idea. I'd like to hear from you. And what's your name? Edward. Edward. So then I would say, you know, I get here and say, I just overheard Edward, I think, said something interesting. Edward, would you mind sharing? So right away, when we talk about the ideas that we've thrown over the side of the boat, Edward's talking. And then I'll go up and choose other people where I present an idea for a minute or two, as you saw. We have conversation for three minutes among yourselves. And then we have three or four minutes where you guys share your learnings. Why? Because then you own the idea better. You, you, it's not only intellectually you got it, but you've applied it and now you own it. And you can apply that and talk to other people about that. And you might go home and talk to someone about these ideas.